Hey guys, and welcome to the Respected Man podcast. Um, I'm so glad you guys took the time to join us today. I have a dear friend of mine on with on the show with us today. His name is Kyle Thomas, and Kyle is an entrepreneur. He's a nomad, and he was a personal business mentor of mine for many years. Kyle is a lover of the journey that comes with building and exploring amazing companies that make positive impact on the world. His day-to-day focus is currently Adora, an agency and mobile charity app. For over 25 years, he's run the gamut from bootstrap startups to exit twice. We all know what that means. (laughs) He's a passionate storyteller, trusted mentor, father, and a branding scientist. He's dipped his toes into many different industries, and he's fully gone down the rabbit hole into the marketing and philanthropic worlds. He was born into a humble yet hardworking family, four generations of farmers and ranchers. That's amazing. He watched and helped his father become a general contractor, and it was his first glance into the business world. He shared with me, get this, he shared with me that he was in diapers when he was first riding horses and picking up hammers. Hope you didn't drop any of those on your toes. <laughs> He's a blue collar. He has a blue collar background and has laid the foundation for his work ethic today and his evolution into the serial entrepreneur that he has become today. It is my pleasure to introduce to you guys my friend, Kyle Thomas. Hey, everybody. Uh, Teresa, thanks so much for having me on. This is uh, an amazing thing that you're working on here uh, to help not only us uh, as men communicate better, which we're going to talk about a little bit, but also to kind of communicate in a way that a lot of times we can't, we just, we don't have the words to do that. So what you're doing is amazing. Uh, It's needed, it's necessary. There's a lot of really interesting realities that we're coming to understand when it comes to relationships, mainly because people wanna have good relationships. So thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to talk a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I can tell you right now, hammers, and horses i've fallen off i fingers toes yeah it, I, 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 that I, entrepreneurial I, journey you know what it's interesting I, I grew up in the dirt and for anybody that grew up in the 80s and 90s you probably know what that means so i absolutely do i grew up on a farm so i grew up with chickens and turkeys and cows <laughs> yeah i really did really... have chores of cleaning the chicken coop and bringing in hay and stacking wood so right, maybe that's why it, we're a, entrepreneurs and we just don't stop now. <laughs> you know, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing. From a work ethic perspective, it's it doesn't feel strange to work longer than an eight hour eight hour day. Working an eight hour day feels weird. Now, we also work seven days a week. Like when you're on a farm or on a ranch or you're dealing with you know the animals still got to eat. You got to eat. The animals got to eat. You don't. It's not a five day a week job it's a six or seven day a week job and and it teaches a a level of work ethic that you know some of you are going to understand and then there are some people who are entrepreneurial or or they've they've learned that to go the extra mile at work means amazing things usually that's I mean we could we could probably talk about that another time yeah I totally agree I totally agree hey I wanted to share with um you Kyle and I wanted to share with the audience listening today a quote that I um, found, and I absolutely love this quote, and it means so much to me, especially when it comes to relationships, but the quote is communication to a relationship is like oxygen without it, it dies. Kyle, you know, I know what that quote means to me, but what does that quote mean to you? I had a relationship die because of lack of communication. Um, and unfortunately in relationships, we find ourselves pointing the finger a lot. One of the things that I've learned is I can't change another person. Uh, The only thing that isn't gonna drive me crazy is if I really focus on myself. I really focus on on working on what I can do to to operate differently. Mm -hmm. And it's been difficult. You automatically, as human beings, we don't like feeling unsafe. And there's an interesting reality with guys. A lot of times guys will go to the gym. They'll get all, they'll, they'll get big, they'll get strong. They'll do everything they can to feel physically safe. I don't know many men who have learned how to be emotionally safe once they become vulnerable. And we don't handle it well. Um, 
I can tell you right now, I've talked to a lot of women, including my, my wonderful sweetheart. And we struggle when it comes to understanding how to handle safety and vulnerability. That's why we don't communicate. We don't want to get rejected. We don't want to be told no. I mean, that's why, girls, if you don't know why a guy hasn't asked you out, it's because he's scared of getting rejected. Because Ooh, he knows how. back to kindergarten, right? That fear of like. Oh. <laughs> then you become men that are still fearing being rejected. And it's a real thing. And we do everything we can, but nobody talks about how to be emotionally strong and resilient and safe as a man. I come from a hyper-masculine, I grew up in Texas, hyper-masculine, total upbringing and background. Uh, my family, we don't, it's funny, when you get to a certain age, you don't even get to hunt with a gun anymore. It's bow hunting in my family. Like we challenge ourselves. We, you get, you get bucked off the horse, you get back on. You don't let that. I mean, I had a horrible accident, a rock climbing accident when I was 20. I have a really nice, like, uh, souvenir from it. And as soon as I could, I got back up on that rock and went back off because you can't let that fear sit there. Now, guys, we learn how to do that, and we do that when it comes to the physical world. We're not so good at that in the emotional world. Right? It's hard. It's definitely one of those hard topics. What would you say in your past relationships was like the one thing um, you wish you could have changed in like some of the conversations or the way you communicated in your past relationship versus how you recognize how you're failing today and you like step up and change that. But what were the things in the past that, you know, or like mistakes that you could have changed and maybe helped the way you had communicated? I think one of the things that's helped me a lot and I'm by no means great at it yet. I still fail more than I succeed. It takes a long time to rewire, rewire yourself, how you're wired to react. And here's what happens a lot. As guys, we don't know, we often don't know, or we don't really think beforehand if this is going to be a stimulant to our partner. Is, is this something that is not going to get me a good result? Like sitting down and get home, don't really do anything, sit down, play video games, trying to detox, but there's no communication. There's no, here's why I'm doing this. I'm trying to disconnect from that and, and kind of get settled and come down from whatever the outside world was. And there wasn't, there's no communication. There's no, here's what I'm doing and why. And there's no, and because there's already a charge around that, there's not really much of a, a, an acknowledgement around it. So I know for me, it's the reaction to the reaction often. I don't know that what I've done has really made my partner that upset. And for me, early on in my life, I'm, I've, I've earned all this, you know, all the, all the gradient, I call it in my beard. Um, I've earned all of that. And early on in my relationships, I didn't, I wasn't open in communication because it wasn't safe for me. And it wasn't safe because of the partner I was with. It was, wasn't safe because I grew up in a family and in a background that where communication wasn't safe emotional and vulnerable communication wasn't safe. And that's the wiring that I had. So one of the things that I've learned is to take a breath before I react. And I'm, like I said, I'm not great at it. I do it, I catch myself some of the time. And those interactions always go better. When I'm able to take a breath and not react to the reaction or react to the stimulus and stop and break that cycle, that, that negative, that what can feel like a never ending eternal cycle, if I can take responsibility for breaking that on my side, um, everything goes everything goes better. At least that's what I found. 